Mission start. Now this is something a little bit different. From Pantasy this time around we have the Metal Slug 3 RK Cabinet Not Lego Set. 86231 is the model name and I saw this a while back and I thought it was really really cool. I wouldn't say I was the biggest fan of the Metal Slug series. I like it. I like the series but I'm not a huge fan but I did like the fact that this is a really cool RK Cabinet. And it's a lot more interesting looking than, say, the Lego Pac-Man stuff. But I wanted to buy this and get this a try. And the first thing you'll notice is this box is beaten up. And I did buy this new. I bought it from China. And I got it from China with a whole bunch of other things from China itself. And we used a third-party delivery service, which allowed it to be shipped from China to here in the UK. And um, one of the things they do as part of the service is to check to make sure that everything's inside. And that includes opening up the box and then resealing it back in, which is a little bit of a shame. Uh, it would be nice to have a brand new box, but I did check the content to make sure that all the bags are inside. And from what I can see, it's all looking fine. So fingers crossed, everything is inside as expected and it should be a smooth building process. So let's take a look at these things. Look at these minifigs which are different from the old Lego minifig style. Um, details including like a coin, buttons operating they've seen from the game, side thing right there. Uh, let's see is there anything on the side. This is how big the unit is going to be. And anything on the back. Uh, some more details which is just like the minifigs there. The arcade thing itself. Um, I don't know if this is actually licensed by SNK Corporation himself. I've never heard of Pantasy. Uh, the only brick construction companies I've ever heard of is Lego themselves, but I was aware that there are non Lego products out there. But let's build this and let's see if this is just as good as a real thing. We'll be doing things including like the feel of the Lego pieces, see if they're any good. So, got my stopwatch right here, and uh, let's get straight into it. Mission start. There we go. Okay, so what we have here is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven bags, but they're totally all for multiple bags. One, four, uh, six, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 22, 23, 24, 25, 27 bags. And as you can see, some of these groups of sections have multiple bags, like that group two has three bags and so on and so forth. That's what it looks like like this. And there is also this thick booklet uh, of facts right here. It is all picture based um, with some Chinese. I can't read any Mandarin still, but looks picture enough to be able to figure out how we're supposed to build this so yeah the quality of the paper is kind of thick good quality not necessarily super shiny glossy but you don't really care about that you just want to see how this thing looks before jumping right into it I wanted to just point this out in terms of these picture graphs and including the pink brick separator so same beats as the official Lego uh, product Fantasy one. It looks like I'm going to need this unlabeled bag as well as bag one. One little interesting bit of detail from this playset instead of Lego is these brick pieces. They tell you, I think they tell you the number of dots of the items you use. That's two, four, six, eight. So that corresponds to that. And then I think here it's supposed to tell you how far you're supposed to put these across. So five units or something I'm not quite sure but that's an interesting bit of detail which is different from Lego okay that's bag one done and that's on to bags two okay now this is a bit I've never seen in my travels and the building of construction blocks a metal spring that isn't to say that Lego don't do that themselves but this is the first time I've had to construct it with a spring I've often used elastic bands and strings and cloths, but 
metal rustic band, a metal spring, kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I had that back to front, so I've switched it around with the den. Okay. Yeah, that looks like it matches now. Now, this is an interesting construction. Springy thing goes down. Turns this wheel. And it also breaks because it's still not finished, but what does this turn? Incidentally, I wanted to bring up this fantasy brick separating tool. It's pink, and I don't think I've seen a Lego pink version of this in the wild. Mm. Okay, this bit's proving to be a little bit fiddly to do, but let's see if I can do it. So I push that across here to preload the cog, as it were. Let's see if I can get this in with one hand on the camera. It's looking good. Mm, that's like that. I managed to thread it through. How far does it need to go? And it looks like it needs. Oh, here we go. This is an expert here. It threads through to the other side. So let's quickly put that together now. Um, yeah, that looks right. And then that gets threaded through there and clumped to there. So let's try this now. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Okay, so it's definitely put the black bit on these yellow bits. Okay, let's see if I can just thread that through this first. Okay, I'll just thread this through here. And that's threaded through both of those. And now I'm just trying to clip this onto this black bit here. Okay. Very secure. What have I done? What have I done? What have I done? What have I done? So it would seem to apply it's like this. So that fits there. And that works, but that makes a gap. Oh, I know what I've done now. Put this in the wrong hole. It's supposed to be in here. Let's see if I can get this felt. Quickly. Uh, you know what? I'm just going to correct it off camera. One moment, please. Right, that was almost a disaster, but I managed to fix it. It looks like it's all in place. That's in the correct place. Um, it can sort of work, but I'm doing this very carefully and gingerly because this is flimsy and a bit of it is coming off. I think I need to build the rest of this construction to reinforce the rigidness of this area. Oh, that bit took a bit longer than I'd like to admit. So I was getting a bit wrong because this bit wasn't connecting properly. And the reason for that is because I skipped an entire bit. Where's the bit? that I did skip, it was 50, I skipped this bit, and it wasn't working, and I wasted so much time, but look at this. Isn't that nice? That's the last bit back to done. Looks pretty cool. Still needs the structure to be complete. It's got this little bit of information here. I wish I knew what it says. If you happen to know what that says, do leave a comment in the comment section down below. And this is open to future cracks if he ever learns Mandarin. But until that time, let's press on to get onto these one, two, um, bag threes. Okay, we're at the point where we need to put on a sticker of some kind, and this is the thing I'd like to show you guys. So in this bag, I've got a bunch of cards, 
and there's a card in the Aegea, but it's also stuck on with these 3M stickers. And this is the sticker he wants to put on, which is a, a card cutout with a sticker on the back, which isn't unlike the official Lego stuff. So let's just see what I can do is attach this one handed. Okay. So then we stick that on to go stick that onto this bit here. Get rid of the viewfinder. No, nope, I'll just use my eyes. That. Yeah, that's good enough. Alright, I've corrected it. It's now a better fit, but check this out. Listen, listen. All right, I'm stuck on this bit right here. So I've built this thing, and according to the instructions, it slots down into that hole when you keep this up. But there's this cog thing that appears to be blocking the way for this green and brown bit. So I guess if you slot it down here, you get stuck on that. So, I think it's supposed to be like this, but then how far does it go, and then this bit's pointing out. I feel like these bits are supposed to have some instructions, but I can't read it. Um, and my stopwatch is running out of power, that's great, I'll have to charge that in a second. Uh, you know what, I'm just going to... Look at the instructions. Translation. One moment, please. Right, I got Google Translate and I figured it out. And it's supposed to be more or less like this in position. Like so. I had to make a couple of other adjustments though. I had to go back to step 90, where this was trying to tell me that I needed to push down this mechanism, this green mechanism, and then put in this uh, extra life thing, this power up block whilst this is being pushed down. So I'm going to show you what I mean. So I had to hold this down and then I had to reattach this whole section of these red blocks so I was in a downward position like this, which means when you let go, it comes back up. And then this block here slides into this position here and then it rests. It's supposed to essentially rest into that spot there. When you push this down, it activates the mechanism. So, yeah, that works. Works just fine. It's a shame that I can't read Chinese, otherwise it would have been a lot quicker to resolve that issue. And that's bag three completed. This is the overall structure right now. And this button here, the brown one, if you push down, produces this effect. Seems alright. And if you push the screen button, it's very springy, very stiff. It produces this effect. All in all good. Uh, I'm not going to lie, this is a nice set so far, but it's also proving to be quite challenging. The challenging bit is happens to be these coggy mechanism bits just to make sure the teeth and everything lines up correctly and some of the other bits where the instructions are in Chinese or Mandarin and I can't read it so I have to get Google Translate to figure out what's going on and this is taking quite a long time to do so who knows how long the rest of it's going to take what did I say it was four five eleven bags uh, 11 bags, I don't know, this may be another three hours to complete, but we'll see. But considering that this stopwatch here is running out of power, I better charge it up, so I'm going to pause it for now. Yeah, resume. You know what, I can't be bothered to wait so long to... Oh, I've messed up this intro, never mind. Uh, 
you know what, I can't be bothered to wait. I'm gonna plug this into a brick so it can be charging on the go because we better move on to <gasps> bag four. It was relatively simple for bags four. The general structure of the arcade cabinet with a bunch of stairs and a bit of a spoiler there for the next bag. This opens up and closes, which I guess is where all the coins go. But we'll see in the future because now we're moving on to bags five. Bag five done, and we're now getting a more solid top here. Flat surface with a knob that turns this. We don't know what it does yet. And we got these two coin buttons here. The brown button does this, the green button does this. And the sad thing is these two buttons don't do anything because they're just flat blocks. So they don't interact and do anything, which is a shame. It would have been nice if all four buttons did something. However, this is still looking pretty nice. Mission. Start. Da -da 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 -da. I, I don't remember how metal slugs go, actually. But now's not the time for nostalgia. Now's the time for bags six. And how do I know it's bag six and not bag nine? Because it looks like they're using this same number font. I'm just using the fact that the fantasy text is on the left. So these are bag six. So this is an interesting block construction idea. We got these cogs, which have to be lined up exactly. And we got these orange, orange uh, pieces of blocks here. And then it looks like what it wants you to do is make sure that they all line up exactly like this. And then from this point, what you do is you remove them. And I guess that's just to, to make sure that these cogs are lined up exactly how it needs to be, which is kind of interesting. So, uh, yeah, again, if only I could read Mandarin. It's worth noting that there is no friction at all. Oops. When you remove these blocks, so it's really easy to come off. And hopefully that's still aligned correctly. We'll find out. Bag is six is done, and it's pretty much the backing of this and these cogs at the back, which I don't know what they do at this point in time, but uh, we'll find out soon enough. Bag seven, sets of seven, and this is the exciting bit because this is where all the mini fakes are stored in one bulk. I don't know about you guys, but I have never seen a Lego piece or a construction block piece like this before. Interesting. So I purposely did something slightly different. I skipped ahead towards the end of this section of bag seven because I wanted to dedicate an entire bit to these minifigs in bag seven. So let's get started on these. And here are the four main characters of the Metal Slug series in this particular order. We've got Marco, Eri, Jama, and Lo. Apologies if I've got these names wrong. I'm not too familiar with the Metal Slugs series. But these are the minifigs. They look absolutely fine. They look pretty good. One thing I do like about these compared to Lego is that their arms, they're on ball sockets. So rather than just going up and down, you can actually spread these out wide in angles impossible for the LEGO franchise. And I do like that a lot. And then also, <clears throat> this comes with a bunch of sprues with their own assorted weapons, which are more detailed than the average LEGO uh, minifig series. I imagine that maybe guns which look a bit too realistic can't be done with Lego, but metal slugs full of big guns to be adding to your collection and a frying pan as you see fix. Uh, I'll probably play with these sprues later on, but for now I'll just leave it like this 
And uh, what comes next? Did that. Oh, look. What comes next is bags eight. So let's see. Okay, I've just finished bag eight, or bags eight, I should say. And uh, this looks like a pretty interesting mechanic. What happens when I do this? Pull this back and... Oh, it's... <laughs> um, something like that. Okay, let me fix it. All right, let's try again. What happens when you pull this? Very delicately. Ooh. Not great. This mechanism is a bit too weak. So this entire thing is quite heavy and this is a quite weak thing. So you need a lot of momentum to get it to turn around like this, I guess. So not great. I mean, the other thing is you just do this with your hands. Which is fine. It does look like a really nice tank, to be fair. And I like the fact that the wheels are rubber. But, um, yeah, the mecha mechanisms... It needs something. I don't know what it needs, but it needs something to get this to work properly. Coming up to the last stretch, I can feel it. It's nine, nine, bags nine. Bag nine complete. We got this nice little side pillars here, along with some extra detail. I also noticed that the lever I had was back to front, so I adjusted this people so that they are up when this is down, like this. And you've got these little hook bits here, which help stop the motion of the rotation. So let's try this. That's a cat over there, don't worry about him. So yeah, that actually helps improve the rotation a bit. This is a bit stiff, it's a bit loose, but it works. Bag 10. Two bag 10s. We got bag 10 done, we got this lovely sign up here of the game's logo. Can I focus on this? Yes, I can. Well, it's a bit dark. I think maybe need some LED lights up here, but I'm just thinking about for the future. Uh, it's also got the nice general shape done, but I'm sure you've noticed that there's a great big hole here. So let's fix that. Let's fix that hopefully with the final bags, bag 11. And with the last sticker pretty much in place, I declare this RK cabinet complete. Let's stop the clock. I see. So there we are. Nearly four hours. I mean, about five minutes of that was messing around. But look at this. Look at this lovely arcade cabinet with the backs filled in with a slightly wobbly placed character select screen. Got ourselves a nice little fantasy gold coin, which we can access here. Pull that out. Uh, uh, Two fingers, just there you go. For that, uh, we got the character select screen here. Let me just push that down a bit, and then if you push it up, push it. I was having some troubles with this a second ago. Okay, so push this up, it changes, so it changes to show the tank and the lovely background there. You switch back and all right so that's the character select screen there you can add the guns but I'm not going to in this case because I worry about losing them um, have I forgotten something about let me just check something let me just check something about the front of the arcade cabinet because 
Right now there's an exposed gap here and I just want to make sure I'm not supposed to cover it. Well, no, that looks like it's it. It's supposed to be, it's allowed to be exposed. Okay, so that's fair enough. So push this ground button, that goes up. That mechanism works quite good. You push the green button, it shoots the tank quite nicely. I don't know if I can adjust this angle a little bit to make it more like this. You know, the downside of adjusting it is it's very loose there, so it might come off. So this might have to be the best it can do. But this is the entire arcade cabinet. As a little extra bonus, let's take a look at some of the other pages. So on the pages of the book, Mission Complete, here's the arcade cabinet. You can also get a little bit of the Astro Boy. Um, some nice scenes from, it looks like Sherlock Holmes, and then Tong Fu In, which I don't know anything about. Uh, let's see, we've got Popeye, which is kind of a nice little ship. Uh, I think this is, um, what is that? What's that anime called? Uh, what's that manga called? What's it called? Um, let me know in the comments down below because I've forgotten. Fantasy TV set. Fantasy uh, computer, I guess. Yeah, I think so. And uh, what is this? Other arcade cabinets, or is this just like this is the design process we went through, building the thing, and uh, here's some information about fantasy themselves, including a QR code, which you can access right now. And here's the Neo Geo arcade cabinet in a different position with some more natural lighting. And the quality of the bricks is good enough. They're slightly lighter than a traditional Lego bricks, um, but they put together just fine. No real issues there, except for the one or two mistakes I made during the filming. Uh, it was actually a pretty simple kit and overall quite a nice experience when it comes to the costs um at the time of recording i got this from china and for china i got it for about 30 to 35 pounds uh looking online in in places like in america or even the uk which actually you can't buy in the uk easily uh you'd have to get it from america and that would cost around about 90 pounds which is quite a big jump in price considering what you get here. And then there's the question of, is it worth having this kit? Is it worth having this Lego arcade cabinet in your collection? Fantasy arcade cabinet. Um, it's a tough one to answer, actually. I, mean, I suppose the question is, who is this for? I think if you're a fan of the Neo Geo and the Metal Slug series, it's a nice addition for your collection. And for 30 pounds, you really can't go wrong, but then it goes higher. It goes to this potentially 60 pounds, 80 pounds, 90 pounds price tag. And that makes it a little bit of a harder sell. Um, and there's a case of if you're not a fan of the series, then would you really want something like this? I don't know. I mean, it looks nice, but this you don't have that nostalgia feeling like a fan would. Uh, then you could argue something like, well, perhaps you could take the insides of this out and turn it into uh, a mini arcade cabinet, a working mini arcade cabinet with an LED screen and a Raspberry Pi computer running emulators. But then for 90 quid, that's not really worth the price tag. And you could use a better body, I suppose, than potentially this. I don't think it would be particularly nice per se i mean certainly not as nice as converting uh, the lego nintendo entertainment system consoles uh, lego sets into a working emulating playing console so do you have anything to say pumper pumper what do you think do you think the people watching this video do you think they should buy this arcade cabinet i see in terms of recommending whether you buy this set for yourself or not, that's tough. But I'm going to have to say, if you can get a good price, like around 30 to 35 pounds, yeah, add it to your collection. Especially if you're a fan of the series of uh, Metal Slug or the Neo Geo collection. If you're not a fan, then I would probably not bother with this. 
And if it's at the high price tag of say, what it was 80, 90 pounds, then no, it's not worth that high price tag. So low price tag, fan of the series, worth it in your collection, yes. Otherwise, eh, you could probably give it a miss. And that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this informative or at least a little bit entertaining. And I'll see you next time.